Hello and welcome back again to another episode of our Power BI interview series. My name is Devin Knight. And I'm Erin Ostrowski. And again, what are we doing here, Erin? Why are we doing this? What's the benefit, hopefully, that we're giving to those that are new to Power BI or what, what, what's the what's Yeah, the absolutely. So we're tackling the Power BI interview. We want to prepare both the interviewee and the interviewer for questions that may come up that should come up in an interview. Right. And we think it's important. It's valuable. Absolutely. So how you'll see we do this is we're going to play the little, little bit of a role where Erin's interviewing for a job. Mm -hmm. uh, she's going to give us some answers and then we'll break the fourth wall a little bit with our role playing and talk about those answers a little bit more in depth as yep. well to hopefully give you more more for your uh, buck there as far as uh, how to answer those questions when you're doing them or how to, what kind of answers you should expect Absolutely. as an interviewer. So let's go ahead and start. So the first question I have for you is I run this loan company where we okay. do different types of loans. We do credit mm -hmm. card loans, student loans, home loans, that okay. sort of thing. And I want to be able to pull together all of the different data imports that I get from mm -hmm. my different loan agencies that I have within my company. So mm -hmm. I have a credit card division, a student okay. loan division, a home loan division, and Makes they all sense. give me a daily file of the complaints okay. that they get about the loans it's that people have. It's a fun file. <laughs> yeah. So I need some way to basically point to a mm -hmm. location and say, load everything from that location and bring it into a report. Can I do that with Power BI and how would I do that? Yeah, absolutely. Just real quick though, uh, just a follow-up question. What format are those those files being sent in? Ah, great question. Yeah, yeah. so uh, all of the file formats are coming in as CSV files and okay. the good news is all of the column names stay the same. So okay, there's no that was variation. My awesome. Yeah, no variation in the way the columns come in. It's mm -hmm. all going to be the same way. Okay, so I think this is a good situation to try the folder option as your data source. Okay. Would you like me to show you? Yes, please do. Awesome. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get our data right up at the top here. And the most common data sources are listed, of course, but folder is not. So we're going to click more, or you could have just clicked right on the button, and we're going to use folder. So I select it, and I hit connect like so. And then I need to find the folder path. So I could either have it copy-pasted, or I could browse and search for it. In this case, I'm going to search for it, so... I think in our case, it's under our D drive, I believe. Yeah, look under okay. this, this PC. Let's see if we can Let's find it. Let's see. So here's our D drive. And I think it's in recording room share. And I want to say it's trainer staging. And... Yeah, interview series. There we are. Yeah, there you go. Data. So we had kind of a lo longer yeah, path Yeah, we here. took the longer <laughs> path just to, just to be fun there. And then hit OK. And like so, and we should see our different tables. So those look right. I see credit card complaints. Yes. I see student loan complaints. Yes. And they are .csv, so this is looking good. Next thing I want to do, I want to combine and edit because I want to launch the Power Query Editor. Okay. Now, as you're doing this, mm -hmm. how, what if I had a new file come into that folder? What, how would it handle that as... Uh, new files arrive? Would it just, next time I do my data refresh, would it load that in or would it do something different? Yeah, it would. It would automatically load all that data in so you would have the most current value as it's refreshing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so we'll give it just a second to pull up. Let's see, and I'm thinking it pulled up on the other screen, so let me grab it real quick. And There we go. Yeah, here we are. And all so right. you can see I've got the credit card complaints. You know what, though? I'm not seeing everything here, so let's load more just to make sure. Ah, there it is. I'm seeing it. Looks good to good. me. So it's got both files in here. Yep. And again, like you said, any new files that I add in, it's next time the data refresh occurs, it's going to automatically pick that up, right? Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. So it's really convenient, easy way to set this up, and you get to have uh, your files that are being sent to you daily brought together in a clean, easy format. Folders is the way to go. Perfect. All right, so let's talk about it a little bit more. So it looked like what you kind of showed. We'll break the fourth wall here for yeah, in the interview. <laughs> uh, so uh, the Power Query Editor, what it allowed us to do, we kind of talked about, mm -hmm. is going to allow us to automatically bring in multiple files from a folder. So right. as new files arrive, next time our data refresh occurs, mm -hmm. it's going to pull those in as well. That's right. Uh, and you might have noticed that it did a lot of extra logic there on the left-hand side, even though we Absolutely. just told it to point to a folder. It had uh, parameters going on. It had a bunch of other stuff. It had a sample file that it used mm -hmm. to determine what the file column names were and the data types were. So it did a lot of extra stuff there for you. And mm -hmm. all you had to do was basically use the front folder option, and it did all this great work for you. Yeah, absolutely. Power BI really allows us to do that sort of click, drag, drop, low code approach, and all that, that tough work is really happening on the back end. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go to our next question here. So our next right. question that I have for you, Erin, is, I need a method, an easy method on how I can move 
queries that I define. So we're mm -hmm. talking about data shaping in this section, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. around how I would do things in the query editor. What would I use or how could I move a query that I designed in one solution to another solution? What's, is there yeah. a simple way to do that? Yeah, there's a couple different ways you can actually approach this. So one thing that comes to mind is you have this M code being written as you're doing your transformations, okay. you're, you're running your queries. You can copy paste that M code. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's, that. that's pretty simple, yeah. right? Um, another thing you can do is you can always export your entire um, report, your all of your transformations, all that logic as a template. Oh, great. Okay. And great. there's a third new option, yeah. which is really exciting, and that's data flows. Ah. So depending on your licensing, your structure, you may that may be a great option. It's essentially like a power query in the web uh, type situation, and yeah. it allows reusable um, data sourcing and one version of the truth. So that's another option potentially. Very cool. So yeah. maybe you can show me. Let's let's talk about the copy and paste okay. one. Show me how that works, yeah, so I have absolutely. a better idea of how to do that. All right. Sounds good. All right, so guy, yeah. So here's our query that we worked on last time. Mm -hmm. How could I get the? You said M code. How do I get the M code out of I did. here? did. Yeah, absolutely. So if you go up to the home ribbon in the advanced editor, like so, bada bing, ah. bada boom, copy and paste. So Power BI is doing all this work behind the scenes for me, and it looks like it saves it here, right? It does. That's exactly right. So as you're making those those steps, those transformations, those applying those business rules. The M code's being written in the background, and it's taking care of all that logic. It's recording it, putting it in the right order, and then you're able to reuse that just by copying and pasting it. Very cool. So I can easily take this, move it on to another solution. Yep. You mentioned templates as well. I can create templates in here. Pretty pretty easy to do that. That's just yeah. a matter of hitting File and going to the Template option. Can you show that real briefly? Maybe close Yeah, absolutely. This? So I'm going to close and apply really quickly so that we can get back to our desktop view. And then if I went to File, Head down to export and click Power BI template. Perfect. Yep. That's awesome. So it created a template here for us. I could hand that template off for somebody else. That's right. And you mentioned a few moments ago a key thing with that is that it doesn't necessarily store all the data in the template. That's right. It just stores all the metadata. So the mm -hmm. visuals, the query, and the then whenever logic. someone goes yep. to open it, if they have access to that same data, they'll be able to see uh, the same thing we did. Yeah, that's exactly right. Awesome. So let's switch back here. So my next question for you here, Aaron, is um, I am developing solutions. Again, the whole theme of this set of queries are questions, not queries. I guess they are queries. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, the, the theme of the questions that we have for today is mm -hmm. all data shaping related. And so I want to be able to understand, is there a smooth or an easy way for me to be able to take a solution that I've created mm -hmm. and I connect it to my development server and okay. I want to be able to easily switch this to production and I want to be able to take that solution and go back and forth. Okay. How could I do something like that where I could change the data source there easily? Yeah, so I think a great option if you want to change the data source is to use parameters. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, would you like me to show you? Absolutely, please All do. All right, yeah, let's, let's dive right in. All right, so to set up our parameter, the first thing I want to do is head over to File and I want to go to my Options and Settings in Options. And I want to head to the Power Query Editor, and I want to turn parameters on. Ah, so it's not so turned on by default. It's not turned on by default. So you definitely want to go in and make sure that that option is selected. Go to OK. And then I'm going to launch the Power Query Editor, like so. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Data Source. And so you'll find that in the Home ribbon. And I want to change my data source. So when this dialog pop box pops up, Click Change Source, and you'll notice the file path right now is set to default as a text file. I actually want to change that. I want to make a parameter, and since I don't have any in existence, it's grayed out, I'm going to make a new parameter. I'm going to call this new parameter data source, just sort of keep it simple for our little example right here. And I want to put the path as the current value. Okay. So this okay. would be the location where our data source file is, or it could be a server name or a database That's name That's exactly or right. Like that. That's exactly right. So I'm going to go grab that really quickly. All right, so now that I've got the value, I just paste that in there. That's the path. Click OK like so. And you'll notice it has changed now. That's a parameter symbol, essentially. Mm. OK? So, All right, I'm curious now. So yeah, go ahead and close this out. I'm curious. Show me this in action. So if I wanted to change that value, where would I actually go? Let's say we're looking at the report. So if you took us back over to the, or even here, yeah, show me here. Yeah, so just to let you show you what happens when you put a parameter in, you'll see this data source at the bottom and you'll see what the current value is. That's obviously the drive that, or the, the location that we have right now. 
but that would change depending on your different source. Ah, okay. Yeah. And so I think if we also close and apply this and we go back to our report view, you can edit the parameter from here as well, right? Yes, you can, definitely. So I think if we go under the Edit Queries option, you'll see Edit Parameters. And so you can actually have a location here where you can easily change that value. And as soon as the value is changed here, it would switch to the new data source. And if the data is different, obviously, you would see changes in the report that you're looking at. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you brought up a really great point is that you can set your parameters and input the data source at different locations. So there's a couple different ways to skin the cat to use a really horrible yeah. <laughs> phrase, <laughs> which you should never use that phrase in an interview probably, but <laughs> there are multiple ways to set up the parameter and change the source. So like you brought, it brought up a great point. And I think if you're in an interview, you know, you can show it multiple ways right. or just explain that. Well, cool. Sure. Let's, let's go to the slide deck here for just a moment and we can talk through some other items related to this that you should be aware of, things you should consider when it comes to using parameters. So let's pull that up for just a moment here. There we go. All right, so uh, we talked about parameters. Uh, again, they can help you make queries dynamic. They can help you make connections dynamic. They can help you make filters dynamic, which is part of the query. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing you should keep in mind when it comes to parameters is that it's for really modifying the data source import process, mm -hmm. not for necessarily filtering visuals. You should stick with slicers. slicers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Other types of visual filters for that purpose. Yeah. If you want to modify the actual query that's importing the data, parameters mm -hmm. are a great way to do that. This is also something you may use when it comes to doing incremental loads and things like that that we'll talk about at a later moment. But yeah. this at least gives you an idea of how to get set up with parameters and how you can answer a question like that where you need to be able to easily flip back and forth to different types of data sources in this case. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's really practical. Absolutely. All right, great. So let's flip back here and talk again. My next question I have for you then, Erin, mm -hmm. is I have bad data I work with. Oh, unfortunately, very yeah. common issue. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of times the data that I receive is brought to me from my end users. Mm -hmm. uh, and then actually the scenario that we're gonna look at here today is I'm working a conference. Okay. So I'm working a trade show and I'm scanning badges to be mm -hmm. able to get leads and things like that. And so me scanning those badges is reliant on the attendee mm -hmm. having typed everything in perfectly and Ooh. done everything correctly, which is likely not to be the case. Yeah. And so I want some method for as I start to work with that mm -hmm. data in Power BI that it actually cleans it up some. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a way to do that? There is. Perfect. I think a fuzzy merge is probably a great option in this instance. Okay. Yeah, because it can work with that ambiguous or slightly misspelled data. It can work with those imperfections. Ah. Oh, would you very like nice. me to show you? I would love to see it. Awesome. I'm really excited about this one. Okay. Let's take a look. <laughs> All right, so we're in the desktop and we've already connected to our data source so that that dirty data is already in here. Okay, all and, right. And we're going to launch that Power Query Editor because this is where we need to make it happen. Ooh, I see it already. Yeah, so I, we're looking. Florida is Flardra. <laughs> 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 Michigan's lowercase. So, you know, these are just some examples, but of course with states you could even have FLA and FL and yeah. so... There's really a lot of use cases for this, but to show you how to do the merge queries, uh, so go up to your home ribbon like so, head up to merge queries, and merge queries as new is what you want to do. And then we want to use the fuzzy matching to perform the merge. So I'm just going to select that right away because I know already that I want to do it. And I'm going to pick the state table because that's what we're going to join on. And I'm going to join on state and state province name. So I'm going to select these two like so. And I'm just going to hit OK. So I've already selected use the fuzzy matching to perform the merge. If you didn't do it at the beginning, do it now. Hit OK. And you'll notice it pulls up a table like so. So let's click on that really quickly. Actually, I said the wrong thing. Let's go here. And let's select, not all, but geography and key, even, and not use the column names, even though that is selecting it all, and hit OK, like so. And if you notice, there is a new column here, mm. and it has the correctly spelled names. Yeah, I see. So you've actually fixed my bad data. So in this case, it looks like the states table was kind of a reference table that we use, our lookup table we use to find the correctly spelled information, right? Mm -hmm. And then we joined to that using a fuzzy merge. There was some additional settings in the fuzzy merge we could do, you know, not necessary for today, but there's a lot of other things you can tweak and adjust in there. 
but this worked great. This actually got us to where we can see our, our corrected data. Let's flip over to the, the um, actually, no, that's it. We, we, I think we, I was going to say we have a slide for that, but we don't. <laughs> it's that straightforward. It's, it's that straightforward, <laughs> yeah. Again, there are some other settings you can play around with, but for the purposes of this one, this got us that data corrected in here just fine, and we're ready for our next question. So All right. my final question here for you is that I need some way to extend what Power Query or the query editor mm -hmm. can do. There's, there's a okay. lot of times I run into things that um, I'm hoping Power Query can solve, but mm -hmm. then I find out there's not a transform already built in. What do you do in those scenarios where there's something you need to do in Power BI, but yeah. there's just not something built in for it? Yeah, that's a great question. Like basically, how do we get past the interface a little bit? Yeah. So let's go under the hood and you have options. You could use Python or R. Okay, okay. Yeah, so if you have someone on your team or you yourself are able, you know some great scripts, yeah. you can pop those in there and extend the capabilities within the Power Query Editor for some of those transforms that just aren't readily available. Now, you've been impressing me with this demo. You always seem to have an example ready to show it's me. It's amazing. Do you, do you have an example <laughs> ready to show me for this one, too? I do. Awesome, I'm ready. Awesome. All, All right. right, well, let's flip over to that and take a look here. Once again, we're going to go into our good friend, the Power Query Editor, like so. And we're going to head to Transform. And then you'll notice under the Transform ribbon, these really nice bold icons right here. We've got R script, we've got Python. In this case, I just happen to have some R code <laughs> available. You're the best at interviewing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing because I know that your problem right now is basically we want to do a little bit of predictive analytics, essentially, yes. right? Because yes. I'm looking here, we've got days, but we're missing some values. So it looks like we didn't have data input in on each day. And so there's these NAs. We want to use the R code to run some predictive analytics and take a good good guess at what those values should be. Okay. We need a complete data set. So I'm going to go get my code really quickly, and I am going to copy paste that in. And you will see we're going to run our script. So I'll just click on it like so. And all I have to do if I have that script is paste it. Of course, you could type it out if this is where you want to do it. And then just hit OK like so. And we should see it happen pretty quickly. So I see there's two things here. I want to look at the output. So I'm going to click on the table really quickly, and we're going to see what happens. Did it mm. do its job? In fact, it did. We now have a new column based on the existing column where those null values are given an, an educated guess, basically, yeah. a predictive analytic guess, so to speak and it fills in those values. And now we have a complete data set that we could use. Very so those cool. gaps are no longer a problem for us. Yeah, so it's really interesting. So you can use functions like this to extend what you can do. Obviously, there, you know, there's a little bit of learning curve with R and Python to kind of pick up some additional coding. I would say so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but look at the power it has. This Absolutely. is not something that we could do with regular Power BI. Where right. we, we have these missing values, and I want to find what I think they should be. Absolutely. This is a great way to do it. And you should also keep in mind when you're working with R and Python, especially um, R in this case, that you may have to do some little installation of libraries or That's packages true. ahead of time yep. to make sure that it can run the code that you need. So yep. just keep that Absolutely. in mind. But you know, if, you're, if you're comfortable working with R, that's not something new to you. You're already familiar with that. Uh, so to wrap this question up, let's go flip over to the slides here for one last moment. And just to kind of wrap up not only the, this question, but the rest of the questions that we had. So uh, we talked through both Python and R are similar, mm -hmm. at least in what they can provide to Power BI. Right. So they can serve as a data source. They can serve as transformative effect. You can be used for that. Or as in visualization. That's really powerful. So you can, uh, in addition to the transform example we showed, uh, so again, we've been focusing on data shaping for mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. uh, this set of examples or questions, but we could have an R or Python visual that's yeah. completely different than anything else that's already built that's right. into the tool. That's right. Absolutely. It's a really great way to extend your power. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, let's flip back here and wrap up. All right. Uh, so great job on your interview again. <laughs> again, all focused on data shaping today. Yeah. Now, if you're interested, we do have a lot of training classes that help back up some of this material as well. Mm -hmm. So take a look at our training courses at PragmaticWorks.com, where you can learn more about what we offer. We even have a yearly or monthly subscription. So if you're interested in kind of getting a short-term burst into that interview that yeah. you have next month, you can certainly do that. And we think this is a great support method mechanism for being able to get you Absolutely. to the next step, obviously. Yeah. Well, again, thank you, Aaron, for interviewing. If you guys have thoughts on other questions that we should be asking, we're going to be yeah. theming all these. Again, this one themed around data shaping. Mm -hmm. uh, give us another theme, a, a set of qu type of questions we should be asking that you're interested yeah. in. You can kind of comment below to give us that feedback. I love that. Yeah, yeah, comment uh, 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 below, uh. do it. 
Um, also, uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. If you're just catching this video for the first time, make sure you subscribe. We have great content that's constantly posted yep, out. That's right. And a thank you again, Aaron. Again, my name thank is you, Devin Evan. Knight, and hope you enjoyed. Thanks a lot.